Welcome to Silver Pros, sponsored by Hero Bullion. I am Silver Dragons, and I'm here with my co-host, Yankee Stacking. What's up, Yankee? How you doing, SD? Great to be on with you tonight. Absolutely. It's a great night because tonight we're talking about how to buy physical silver, but more importantly, how to store physical mm. silver so you don't damage it and it doesn't get stolen. <laughs> Wow, these are great topics. Yeah, I mean, these Looking are great to topics it. for new stackers, but also mm -hmm. experienced stackers as well, because me and Yankee, we've been around the block a little bit. We've learned a lot of things over the years, and we're happy to <laughs> share all of our knowledge with you because we want you to be a silver pro. Stack like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, can I just say, I got to say this. Yeah. Just because we call ourselves silver pros, and we want to help you stack like a pro doesn't mean we can't learn how to be a better stacker. And just you and I, SD, talking together, I learn from you. And I hope maybe occasionally you learn from me. But it's important that we always strive to be better stackers. Absolutely. And and yes, Yankee, uh, you definitely are more seasoned in some areas oh, than myself. So I'm always go. learning. But But that being said, we want to first talk about buying this stuff right here physical bullion where do you buy it so what right. are the different options yankee well my number one has to be my local coin shop dealer mm -hmm. and and i'm blessed to be able to have a great one close by that isn't the case for probably a lot of people uh watching this video they're yeah. going to say well that's all fine and well but i don't have a local coin shop dealer so there are other ways to get your bullion like online right it's and hero bullion <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely you know we we are sponsored by hero bullion so we are going to talk about them but also they do have great prices but before we show off uh their website and you know we'll briefly look at some charts and whatnot um i agree with you local coin shops are definitely one of the best places when it comes to buying silver when it comes to buying gold for a lot of different reasons um, probably the biggest is, you know, cash in, cash out. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's no uh, record of your transactions, if you will. There <laughs> you shouldn't know? be. There shouldn't be. If you have an LCS dealer who's asking you all kinds of personal questions, it's time to leave. Yeah. I, unless you're buying over, what is it, $10,000 in one transaction. You do have, well, that's because you have to fill out the, uh, the paperwork right, for, right. for uh, the feds. But... If you're if you're just the first time in there, yeah, they may ask or she may ask some you know questions about you, but they really shouldn't be asking you, you know, social security address, all that. Maybe if you have a, a personal check, might be, but if you're buying something with cash, which is one of the bonuses for going to an LCS dealer, right. it should be cash in, cash out, no questions asked, really. E exactly. And and you know, the other reason too is you can get really, really go good deals. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten smoking deals. I got American Silver Eagles for under seventeen dollars mm. from my LCS a few years back. Mm -hmm. Obviously, silver price was lower, but the premium he only charged me a dollar twenty-five premium <laughs> back then. It was crazy. It, but I know that Yankee Stacking has gotten some better deals than myself because Yankee is definitely a pro when it comes to getting to know your dealer. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, Yankee? I will. I'm not going to belabor it, but I'll tell you that Tim Marshner of the uh, Coin and Stamp Shop is a wonderful guy. Uh, there's another local coin shop dealer nearby. I won't mention what it is. I didn't go back after my first visit there. Um, the reason being is you want to be able to have someone you can connect with so that they understand what it is that you like to stack, that they know you're a regular, someone you're going to you know, frequent, be a good patron for. And Tim's a great guy. He teaches me a lot. And back when you were stacking your ASE so hard, SD, he was letting me pick through and, and pick out anything that he thought was, you know, that I thought was cull or circulated. He was letting me buy some of these things for spot. And they were really, really good quality. So, wow. I Eagles know. for spot. And, and <sighs> you would not get this with an online bullying dealer. Just, just you know, even oh. if they're a smaller dealer, they, they won't know you face to face. You right. know what I mean? There's something right. to be said about walking in. They recognize you, call you by name, and maybe they even hold stuff for you. Maybe something comes in the shop that they know you want, 
and they won't sell it because they know you're coming in later. Good point. They, if you explain what it is that you're doing, trying to do a monster box and trying to get, you know, uh, pre 33 gold, whatever it is, they can help guide you and get the stuff that you're interested in. That's a, you know, tricky to do with a different type of dealer. Right. So, okay. So that's, that's buying locally at, at a local coin shop, bullion dealer. They're the same thing, right? LCS, bullion dealer. People be call careful. Them, yeah, go ahead. Be, be careful of pawn shops. Oh, be careful yeah. of we buy gold shops. I know occasionally people will put in a comment or email me saying, I got a great deal, Yankee. But most of the time, they are catering to the desperate and ill-informed or those that have no idea what they're talking about. You walk in there and say – spot <laughs> spot price immediately they're gonna go oh oh it's one of them yeah most of the time that's what i've seen around my area yeah definitely i i don't recommend going to the pawn shops you want to go to a place that does bullion or they do coins and bullion if that's what mm. you want to buy if you want to just buy coins then yeah mm. coin shop will, all of them will be fine so um okay other than local coin shops or an online bullion dealer yankee how do you feel about other websites like craigslist or you know you could buy off instagram let go whatever there's tons of these websites out there facebook marketplace right yeah. right yeah. but my personal opinion is if you have been buying for a long time you know how to test it you know how to buy safely mm -hmm. and not get scammed mm -hmm. then it's okay but if you're new definitely avoid them do you share the same sentiment i agree um i think some education is important before you go off and buy private sales but that being said, I think private sales are a phenomenal way to do it, too. As long as you do it in a safe place, a lot of police departments have a nice place where you can go over Amazon pickups and exchanges and you can or, or eBay uh, sales. Go somewhere safe during the day. And I've made some great deals or purchased some great stuff uh, in person through those uh, sites that you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, you definitely can get a better deal. Like, obviously, if you cut out the middleman, if there's no dealer involved at all, it's just person to person, you can get a better price. But Bring a scale. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but also it could be fake silver. They could be trying to scam you. They could be trying to rob you. Mm. So, you know, mm -hmm. again, if you're a first timer, maybe stay away from that. But if you've been doing it for a while, then try and get some good deals. And or, also, yeah, go ahead. Magnet, uh, neodymium magnet for testing silver. Very important. Again, this is if you're buying privately. Uh, hopefully, you've got an LCS dealer that tests and knows that the stuff is genuine. But you really want to be able to know when you're buying something, it's really silver. So sliding one of these, very important to do something like that on a private sale. Absolutely. You don't know the person. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, always trust but verify. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now let's talk about buying online because there are some benefits to mm. buying online. So we're going to switch over to Hero Bullion here. Yeah. Why don't you, can you just really quick highlight what are the main benefits from buying from an online bullion dealer? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when you buy online, well, there's a few things. Number one, you can trust it, right? Because there's lots of big trusted bullion dealers out there. You don't have to worry about them sending you fake, you know, silver, fake gold. Um, but also you can get good deals as well. And again, if you don't have a coin shop in your area, this is really your only other option, right? True, it is. So, it is. and they do have free shipping uh, on uh, orders here. I, I know sometimes it's all orders. Sometimes it's over $100. I'm not sure what it is right now, but we can look at some gold. We can look at some silver uh, and kind of check out their prices. But again, uh, Hero Bullion, they are sp sponsoring the show, but they have some killer deals as well. They also have great customer service for an online bullion dealer. I mean, that's what you usually give up when you go with the big guys online. Um, they're not going to under they're, they're not going to take really really good care of you. But Hero Bullion is unique that way. They are very very supportive, helpful, and uh, and they're just straight up. I mean, you're you're going to get the deal that you see. You're not going to get a bait and switch. Right. Yeah. Which does <laughs> it, it does happen. Absolutely. It does happen. So, um, again, you know, this is some of the stuff they have in stock here. If I was going to be buying silver today from Hero Bullion, I would probably be looking at something like the Britannias. Look at this. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we didn't show spot price, but uh, 
I know these are on pre-sale, but uh, we could quickly look at the spot prices too. And uh, while, while I pull this up, Yankee, here, um, you've done business with Hero Bullion yourself, right? I mean, I know I've, sure bought, I've bought from oh. them. I've bought gold from them, silver from them, and had no yes. problems. None. It comes fast, too. I'm actually waiting on a piece of gold that, unfortunately, Hero Bullion didn't have that I was after, or else I would have bought it through him. But I bought it through a different uh, online bullion dealer, and mm. it's taking forever. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? You know, Hero Bullion also has the um, the e check has some really good, uh, you know, big bullion dealer type options too that that uh, set them apart. So I was just gonna briefly show gold. We're chilling right around seventeen twenty seven. Uh, yeah. We can look at silver as well. Silver has been uh, sort of tapering 25. a hair. Yeah, it's right around uh, what is it twenty five ten something like yeah. that. Um, but but I have got yeah. the whole year chart pulled up, and the reason I pull up the year chart is partly because it automatically does that. You know, you can you could toggle it, but also I do want to show this because you know as far as the bull run with silver goes, we're just getting started. I know some people saw the recent dip; it was like 26, went down to 25, and they're thinking, yes. "Oh my gosh, should I stop buying silver?" No, you should be buying silver. These bull runs typically last you know a decade. Right. And we're we're one year in <laughs> and look at everything that's going on in the world. So I know we're not talking about why you should buy, but I just <laughs> wanted to bring that up because. Can I give it one tip for please, people watching please. this video? Do not buy high and sell low. Right. OK, it's this is the time to be accumulating your wealth protection. Absolutely. And so now that now that, you know how to buy physical bullion and unless there's anything you want to <laughs> add yankee we'll talk about how to uh properly store it i think let's move on let's move on to the the storing of our silver and gold because there's a lot of good points about this that we should make yeah oh my gosh um we could probably do a whole video on just how to store it but the real thing is you need to know how to store it properly and how to store it safely because there is the security Those issue. are two different things. Those are two different things, right? Right. So storing it properly, that would be, you know, putting it in the right flips or the right containers. Uh, mm -hmm. Storing it safely is, you know, what kind of safe, where is it, that, you know, what's your security yeah. like? Those are sort of what you're thinking about. So, right. yeah, go ahead. Can I show you, can I show you a few things that I store my silver uh, in? Absolutely. So All right. let's see uh, what how Yankee does it. This is the Yankee special. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely have uh, you know the standard American silver eagle tubes. You can see these are uh, cull or circulate little toning going on there. But and I I do this when they're partially full. But I do like to use these you know popcorn peanuts or whatever just to keep things from rattling. Nice. I don't like my yeah tubes to rattle much. Uh, I put one in here on a tube of. Canadian Maple Leafs, which I just bought at this dip. Nice. 2021. But again, no ching, 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 right? So that's one way in your tubes. Yep. Very nice. Uh, coin capsules, which I'm showing some right here. These are a popular way to store uh, silver. I don't capsule most of my silver. Right. I capsule the things that are special. The uh, silver ice cream cones, which I usually put in my treasure box here. I'll show you really quick. Yeah. So let's... in here, yeah. So we got a lot of, you know, stuff in here that is capsuled. Those are a way to protect your silver. So um, you're saying if it's if it's bullion doesn't need yes. a capsule. If it's has numismatic value, then maybe or you want to protect it more. Or even semi numismatic value, right? right? Or just fun so, stuff, yeah. Or just fun stuff. That's right. So yeah, that's my. Uh, ice cream cone box so definitely that's a, another way to uh, store it with the coin capsules and by the way i do like um these these are the airtight brand oh yeah okay on fire guy oh, from ebay yeah. <laughs> check those out in fact check out what this is this is an america the beautiful capsule here man oh nice mm, just waiting for another chunk of silver so i do like them because they are really tight you can get some cheaper ones for for me if if i care that much about my silver to put it in an 
in a, in a coin capsule, I want the best. And I think Airtight's the best. That's my personal opinion. So, so I do agree. Uh, I'll show off these particular capsules here. This is the 40 millimeter black green capsules, Airtight brand. Um, yeah, and you can go black, you can go white. Yeah. Yep, they got or black ring, ring, white yeah. ring, red ring. They got mm -hmm. all sorts of kinds of things. But let me mm -hmm. point something out. A lot of people like the clear capsules, and that, that's fine. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. But right. uh, let me show you why you would want to go black ring over clear. So um, let me just let me grab this kookaburra here. So this one comes from the mint in this capsule here. Okay. So yes. if if a coin or a piece of bullion comes already capsuled, you do not take it out of the mint capsule. Ever? Some, ever. Is well, okay, it? you could take it out. To, but what I'm saying is you want to <sighs> eventually leave it in this capsule because people know they come in capsules. And mm -hmm. when you go to resell, if you ever do, they're going to want the original mint capsule. So well to, to me, it kind of hurts the value a little bit. But I, let me show you uh, one of the black green capsules. This particular uh, coin here, the new Batman, just came out. By the way, these are smoking. It's going to be a crazy series. It's the DC Comics series. These do not come in a capsule. However, these coins doubled in value mm -hmm. within a week because they sold out. <laughs> They're super high demand, and you're mm -hmm. going to want to protect it. So you could put this in either a just clear capsule, but I like the black ring capsules because I think it makes the coin pop just that I much agree. more. I like black. And and let me just shout out gold for a quick, quick second. I know yep. this is silver pros, but if you're dealing with 24 karat gold, like a, a buffalo or the Canadian maple leaf, you really do want to capsule these things. Right. You want to protect them. They're soft, soft metal. For my American uh, eagles, I don't capsule my all my gold american uh, eagle coins right 22 carat right 22 carat but definitely 24 you should so. and, and yeah. i will say this as well when it comes to gold i don't i don't have any of the really small pieces but the really small pieces mm. of gold when you put mm -hmm. them in capsules it's going to make them easier to pick up <laughs> yeah easier to handle but it just makes the whole coin a little bit bigger they look bigger don't they <laughs> <laughs> i mean we're not above that we're not above making it a little look big <laughs> But but all, the main reason is they're easier to pick up and handle. If you have small, yeah, this is tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's easier in a capsule. So anyway, that's capsules. What about flips, Yankee? Oh, can let's you talk flip. This is a hot topic. If, if yeah. you need to hear this, especially if you're new, there is mm. a wrong way to put coins in flips that will literally ruin them. So mm -hmm. Yankee, please walk mm -hmm. us through this. Do you want me to show you the wrong way first or the right way? <laughs> let's let's start with the wrong way. All right. So this is a piece of cheap uh, plastic. Uh, pl what do they call it? Uh, plasticized, I should say, uh, flip. It's, it's very flexible. Mm -hmm. It has a, a different sheen to it. It's not good. You don't want to put your silver in here. You're going to be disappointed. It might take a few years, but you're not going to like what you get with yeah, this. It's going to change There's crazy also, color. It's changed color. Yep. Yep. In fact, a quick story. My local coin shop dealer, Tim, when he bought his coin shop dealer, he got all the stock that was from the prior dealer. Uh, and, and a lot of them were coming in this, this manila type folder. They kind of look like this, but it was like a, uh, uh, you know, like a paper manila paper wrap right yeah, and yeah he, and i said oh i was looking for some walkers right and he's like and they were in the plastic and i said well oh, there's some in here he said yeah go ahead open those up and i did and they're all green and i Ruined looked at them. him and i'm like what and he said yep that will ruin them do not put them in those so i was so disappointed that they were put in that so this is the wrong way that uh manila type folders are the wrong way this is the right way in fact, I just bought another pack of these off Amazon. I'll put the link. It's the uh, UPVC that you want. The UPVC right is for you. Right the PVC you do not want. That's how you remember it. UPVC is for you. <laughs> yes. Unplasticized vinyl. That's what you want. This stuff is much safer. This will keep your coins protected. So they're, they're more rigid. They're more clear. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and by the way, I will say this, when hero bullion ships out all their coins, they're always in, in these, if they're in a, exactly. if they're in a flip. 
this is the good stuff. This one's Guardhouse. Um, actually, I might have you put the link, uh, if you don't mind, in the description of the video for people who want to find these. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, all the other large bullion dealers use those as well. Um, most local coin shops will use them. Uh, but I see you're holding a cardboard flip here, Yankee. Yeah, some of these are good. Some of these are not. Right. Um, I've seen problems with the plastic on these. So I, I don't put these. I don't use these as much anymore. <laughs> now, I, I will say this. If you're getting new cardboard flips, they should be mm -hmm. fine. All of the ones That's I have point. are fine. Uh, I've never had a problem with them. Typically, right. these are for numismatic coins. You usually do not want to store bullion in these cardboard flips. If you're going to be buying, you know, fun ice cream cones like we talked about, these are a great way other than the capsules because these are way cheaper. I agree. I've capsules, got these. Yeah. That's why I don't capsule all my coins. It brings the total price of your bullion up. And if you're buying tubes, you don't want to pull out all your – I did. When I first started, I got all my American Eagles and put them in the coin capsules. <laughs> now I use all those coin capsules for the right bullion. Right. So, yeah. and, and, and I will say this, too. You can get just the tubes, not the American Silver Eagle tubes. True. You can get yeah. just regular round tubes. These are for rounds. Oh, yeah. Those are good. And uh, th this one holds 20. This one holds 10. So there's different options. Oh. But I would say if you're going to be lo buying lots of generic silver rounds, because those are very popular, those are an epic thing to stack, especially right now, this is going to be your bread and butter mm -hmm. when it comes to storing them. I agree. And I'm looking at that uh, tube you have over there. Um, and I wanted to show the guardhouse box that I have for half dollar. So again, these are using the same type of tube that you uh, are using for half dollars and inside a box that holds all of those tubes together. So that's one way to store. This is, you know, uh, Just, constitutional silver, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. A good way. It, it, it's junk silver. And, and right. I will agree with you. A lot of people like the guardhouse boxes when it comes to junk silver. But for me personally, I don't use them. I use these, the canvas bags. There's oh, no you go with the canvas bag. Yeah, there's no reason in my mind to have them each in an individual tube. It is easier to count them. It's easier to know how much you have. But right. if you're just in the accumulation phase, you can just put them in these canvas bags. These are super cheap or they're free or they'll come yep. with your silver if you buy like a, a hundred dollar, <laughs> you know, a hundred dollars. Not everybody value. does that though. Right. So you might have to buy your canvas separate. Somebody gave me this. Right. I think it's a cigar box. I just throw my loose silver. I mean, this is really how you handle. Ooh, can I just. It's circulated. If you're buying it's... junk silver, you can you can hold it. You can clink the coins around. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay, back away. <laughs> <laughs> They've been clinking right. around for at least 60 years in, in exactly. someone's pocket, right? <laughs> right. So for, for junk silver, constitutional silver, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, any other thoughts? I will say this. If you get the monster boxes empty... I don't have one to show here. I didn't bring it out. But if you if you get the mm. empty monster boxes, those mm -hmm. are really great for storing silver bars. Uh, in a monster box, that would normally store 500 American silver eagles in mm -hmm. the tubes like Yankee has there on the left, the green toppers. Right. You could get just the box. You can get them off eBay or even from some of the bullion dealers and use those to store your other types of rounds and bars and things like that. Good point. And yes, I do that, actually. I, I, I Just like you, I don't have the monster box handy, but I put some other things in there sometimes, too. If I have a spare box, that, that's the way to go. Cool. So any, any other thoughts on properly storing, or should we get to safely storing? Let's talk about safety. That's important. Okay, yeah. Safety first, right? So <laughs> here's the thing. I get asked all the time. I'm sure you do, Yankee, as well. Where do I store my silver once I buy it? Because I don't want to yeah. get robbed. You know, I want to mm -hmm. store it safely. Should I keep it at home? Should I keep it in a bank? Should I and have the it And the answer vaulted? is to send it to Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, but seriously, though, all joking aside, let's first talk mm -hmm. about storing in the bank. Uh, what do you think, Yankee? Should you ever have 
your gold and your silver in a safe deposit box in the bank? Let me think. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely I don't, I don't no. Store, I don't store much of anything in a bank. Just enough to pay my bills. Right. Get Run away. <laughs> Run away. Do not store your bullion in a safe deposit box. Right. And, and there's several different reasons. But number one, the bank could go on a holiday. You could not have access to it. Um, this has happened before in the past. People weren't allowed mm -hmm. to go into open their safe deposit boxes. You know, the bank can come up with all these different reasons. Oh, you know, it's a crisis. You know, we've mm -hmm. heard that one. Um, and and simply not allow you to get to your bullion. So we would never want someone to buy a bunch of gold and silver and then not be able to get to it. You're absolutely right. And, and the safety, you know, the safe deposit box sounds safe, right? Right. But there are, if you study the laws, you realize that you are foregoing your right to what's in that box. The bank owns it. They allow you to get to it and you can take your stuff out when you can, but it, there is a real risk when it comes to a safe deposit box. Okay. So, so, very so that's a no. What about vaulting it? I, this is very controversial, but if I buy precious metals, if I buy coins, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, should I have them professionally vaulted ever or should I store them myself, perhaps at home? Well, you said a key word there, professionally. All right. So we need to be careful. If, you're our, if you are going to vault, it needs to be a bonded company that is reputable has a long-standing, uh, you know, a reputation of taking care of your precious metals. But, but why said, would you? But why would you want to? I, the that only thing, said, yeah. I wouldn't do it under right. normal circumstances, right? If you don't hold it, you don't own it. We know that, right? But there so, are unique circumstances where it might be useful to do that. For example, maybe you're going out of the country, yes, something like that. You don't want to take all this gold and silver, or maybe you can't even take it with you to certain countries. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, like, how are you going to get it there? You put it in your backpack on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's a um, challenge. And, I, and I've, I've talked with, with people, uh, some of my members who literally have that problem. Literally. I have money. I have gold and silver outside the country. Where should I put it? and they can't move it. So that is one reason why you might want to go with a reputable um, vaulting service. You, you are gonna pay extra to do this, right? but it does come with some protection. Make sure you go with one that really does allow you to see the bullion that you have. Some of them actually, uh, you know, mark the boxes, sc scan them, they're co Gotta barcoded. Be itemized. You no, know, itemized, exactly. Right. Uh, I would say the last thing around this is that there's one other reason why you might want to vault. And that is if you are a, an investor with, you know, your IRA, mm -hmm. 401k, whatnot, and you want to have physical precious metals, you're not allowed in your IRA to take possession of that, yeah. hold it and store it in your house. Right. To buy it and have it shipped and stored at a vault is a viable option. So, I will say this, as far as self-directed IRAs go that need to be vaulted, you should definitely do your own research, you know, make sure it's private, non-bank, mm -hmm. make sure it's bonded, mm -hmm. it's itemized, mm -hmm. and really do your research on this because there's been issues with, you know, some of these vaulting companies in the past where they say they have it, maybe they don't mm -hmm. have it, maybe yes. there's a little double dip situation going on where like, 10 or 100 people have the same silver bar with their name on it. <laughs> so seriously, if that's the route you want to go, do some heavy research, call them, you know, make sure you're not doing it improperly. All right, let's bring the bullion home, uh, uh, Silver Dragons. Tell yes. us what to do if it's at home. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. This is, this is why we stack gold and silver. We want to have this stuff here at home that's where we mm -hmm. want it that's the best place for it right where i can easily access it where you i know where it. it is so okay if you're gonna have it at home there's some really really bad places to put it <laughs> and i kind of want to start there the worst places are going to be like you know in your bedroom in a shoebox. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> even even in the pantry, you know, people have like the the Quaker Oats container or whatever, oh. and they store them in that because they think yes. it won't get found. They'll put them mm. in their living room in like a book, you know, that it's a hollowed out book, you know, something like that. You know, these are places that a, a, a thief, a burglar could easily get to and right. easily find. If they're tearing your house apart, they're going to find it. Right? Yes. And most of them are in there to grab and go, right? They're not going to take too much, too a, a long time to look for this. But right. if they are, if they've got time, you've got to make sure it is really, really safe. So what are some of the, the good places for us to put it? Right. So... In my opinion, I've said this in videos in the past, the absolute best number one place is going to be that heavy hidden safe. We're talking, if you can get it in there, a few thousand pounds bolted to the ground in mm. a hidden room. So even if they find it, they're going to have a really hard time accessing it. But the other thing when it comes to security is, you know, there are those really rare scenarios, but some people in our community, it's happened to them. They'll have a burglar, you know, use a weapon to force the homeowner to tell them where the silver and gold is, right? Exactly, right. So there's other security measures you need to take. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you want to get really extreme, a big, loud dog, you know, <laughs> firearms, if you know how, if you're trained to safely handle them and whatnot. These are all really good things as well. I've got lots of guns. I know Yankee does too, but um, you know, I, no, I yeah. One, go, one go thing, ahead. one thing you said too, I, it just sparked a, a thought in me. Um, when I go out, sometimes I'll, I'll have money in my pocket, but I'll also have a wallet with a little bit of cash in there, a throwaway wallet, yeah. right? So if anything happens, boom. Is there something com you know comparable in the precious metals? Oh yeah. Safe oh yeah, but absolutely. So it's it's the decoy safe. And if you want to, if you want to do it the right way, I think everyone should have a decoy safe as well. This could yep. be uh, one of those wall safes in your bedroom. Um, mm -hmm. It could be one of those cabinet type safes. That's a little easier to bust into with the right tools. Um, right. But it doesn't need to be really well hidden. It could be, it could be in your wardrobe closet uh, just sitting there. Right. And inside that safe, that's where you put your copper bars, your fake silver, fake gold, that kind of stuff. So if they mm -hmm. find it, they think they found, you know, the Fort Knox and then they take off and all your real stuff is protected. I think it's a great idea. I do want to say though that sometimes people are like, well, I've just started stacking. I haven't invested in a safe yet. Where should I put it? And for my advice uh, is that you put it in a place no burglar is going to think of going to at least at first. Maybe if they had a whole day to search your house, yeah. they might eventually get to it. So what are some of the better places to hide your silver or gold? Well, I mean, everyone lives, you know, in a different house. So not everyone's going to have a safe room or hidden rooms or things like that. Or even um, a basement. Yeah, maybe you don't even have a basement. Maybe you don't have like a wine cellar with a little back corner or whatever, you know. Um, I don't have a wine cellar with a back corner. So. Right, so That's... maybe you have to get a little bit creative. But but really, the, the bottom line is heavy and hidden. So whatever that means to you, however you can hide it the best you can, maybe put some things in front of it. Uh, maybe Maybe a cellar. Maybe you do have a cellar with a bunch of dirty, you know, boxes full of old paperwork or whatever and you put it behind those hey here's a question would you ever bury your silver i would <laughs> i okay. it wouldn't be my first option because i like to well also for me personally i like to pull it out i like to handle it and i like to show to it off it up. <laughs> i like to show it off on my youtube channel right Right. So you're not going to say, hold on, I got to go out back. I'll be yeah, <laughs> to dig my silver up. Let me go do some gardening real quick and then I can <laughs> make my video. Gardening. Yeah, no. So for me personally, uh, you know, right now, definitely no. But um, yes. I, I think it's not the worst place you could store it. As long as it's <laughs> properly sealed container, there right? It is. There it is. Airtight, watertight. Yes, absolutely. You got to make sure you do that. Yep, that's true. All right. It's not for me either, but hey, some people do it. It's just don't forget where you dug and buried your silver and gold. Right. And and while we're on the topic of, you know, security and all that, I will mention as well, you should not tell lots of people 
that you own silver and gold. This this goes along with yeah. safely storing it. You don't mm -hmm. want a ton of people out there to know that you're stacking bullion because that puts a target on you. So, I you're absolutely right. Loose lips, right? You don't want that. You want as few people to know as possible. Although I will say that there are some people that advocate having one other trusted friend, family member, something that knows where, right? Something happens to you, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe potentially split it up between them. You got to be very careful. I don't personally like that idea, but I know there are those that advocate for that. Yeah. And I would say if maybe you live in a, an apartment complex, you know, and, and your parents True. have a big house with a big yep. gun safe, you know, that's in their hidden room or something. It's like, okay, <laughs> dad, go. I'm going to let you hold my coins. <laughs> so exactly. yeah, maybe for someone that would be a good idea. So anything else you want to add Yankee on uh, purchasing physical bullion and storing it? Do both. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I think we covered it. And that was, uh, I think, uh, really, hopefully very helpful for people that are watching this video. Absolutely. Uh, that was a ton of fun. If you do have any mm -hmm. questions, feel free to put those down below in the comments section. I definitely want to thank you, uh, Yankee, for coming on this video with me. I hope everyone has enjoyed the discussion. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you next time on Silver Pros. Stack like a pro.